Hey, it's Math Mark again. Maybe I should get a special hat or something. Let's talk about the Monty Hall problem. I was introduced to the Monty Hall problem at a GDC conference. So what is the Monty Hall problem? The Monty Hall problem is from a television show called Let's Make a Deal. At the end of that show, the host, Monty Hall, would present the participant with three doors. Behind one of those doors was a new car or some other really awesome prize. And behind the other two doors was something silly usually, like a goat or a pile of garbage or something like that. So they don't know which prize is behind which door. Then the participant is asked to pick a door. They pick a door and then what happens is Monty Hall opens up one of the other doors and shows the pile of garbage or the goat and asks the contestant if they want to switch to the other door. And the question is, the Monty Hall problem is, should you switch? So some of you are familiar with this and have already shouted out the answer. Some of you are thinking a bunch of different things. The answer is that yes, you should switch. So I was introduced to the Monty Hall problem at a GDC years and years ago. And he introduced the Monty Hall problem just like this. And then he kept talking. And then after a couple of minutes, he said, now I know I've lost all of the programmers in the audience because they're desperately trying to prove me wrong with math, but just let it be and believe what I'm saying and we'll move on. That didn't work. I don't actually remember what that talk was about at all because I spent pretty much the whole remainder of the talk trying to figure out the Monty Hall problem. I was actually familiar with it. I had seen Let's Make a Deal. I just never really thought about the mathematics of it. So I'm going to try to show you that this is correct, that you should switch. And I'm going to try to do it in two ways. The first way is more of an intuitive way, but the second way is we'll basically do the math. First, the intuitive way. Instead of three doors, let's imagine you have 12 doors. Okay, so you pick one of those 12 doors, then Monty Hall proceeds to open up 10 of the other doors showing that there's nothing or garbage behind those other doors. Should you switch now to the other door? Does that make a little bit more sense? Does it seem a little bit more intuitive that the chances of the prize being behind the other door are much higher in this situation, right? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Maybe for some of you, that was enough. It kind of is enough for me, but it's not quite enough. I've got too much math going on in my head. So let's do it the math way. There are only three scenarios here. You either pick this door and it's got the, the car behind it, you pick this door and it doesn't have the car behind it, or the other, you pick this door and it doesn't have a car behind it. That initial choice, you have a one in three chance of picking the car, correct? Now, some of you are feeling like, well, there's actually nine different scenarios where I pick different doors. That's true, but those other six scenarios that I'm not showing here are identical to these three, so it doesn't change the math at all. If you want to, I, I leave that as an exercise to the reader if you want to map out all nine. The math turns out exactly the same, so it doesn't change anything. So let's walk through these three scenarios. In the first case, you pick the car, Monty Hall opens up one of the other doors. If you switch, you lose, you don't get the car because you pick the other door that has garbage behind it. In the second case, what happens is you pick this door, Monty Hall opens up the third door, the door that has garbage behind it. If you switch, you switch to the car because it's the only other door left to switch to. If you don't switch, you get some garbage. And in the third case, it's exactly the same. He's going to open up the second door instead of the third door and you switch to the third door and you win the car. In the end, what it means is switching gives you a two thirds chance of winning because 
it's the inverse of the chance of picking the car in the first go. Hopefully I got you there and you understand this now. If I didn't, pause the video and figure it out for yourself. Do the math. Maybe do a few example problems for yourself. It's not that complicated. It just takes some time to wrap your head around it because this is somewhat counterintuitive to the way our natural biases work. The reason why this throws people off, especially people with more of a mathematic background, is they're treating these two decisions as independent. My first choice, I had a one in three chance of picking the car. But now at the second choice, there are two doors left, so I have a 50-50 shot. But that's actually not the case at all, because what's happened is the problem set has changed. These two decisions are not independent. And so as game developers, we need to consider the fact that sometimes players are going to treat decisions as independent from each other, even when they're not. And sometimes you need to provide them a vast amount of additional information and incentive to give them enough to understand that these things are linked together and that they should change. The other thing that's worth thinking about is consider your mental state in these three different scenarios. So if you pick the one of the garbage doors and don't switch, you lose, you feel like, oh well, you know, luck of the draw. If you pick the garbage door and switch, then you feel like, yay, hooray, I made a good choice. In the case where you started out, in that one in three case where you started out with the car, if you don't switch, you feel smart. If you switch, you feel like you made a mistake. You feel like you had the right choice and you threw it all away. There's a bias called the choice supportive bias. And this is a bias where people tend to anchor on to their initial choice, partially because being wrong for switching feels worse than being wrong for not switching, but partially because we just want to stick with what we are, what we, we tie things to our identity. So again, as game developers, we need to think about the fact that players will tend to anchor on their choice. You see this with morality. Players tend not to oscillate back and forth with binary morality systems because they tend to make a choice. They anchor on that choice. They fall into a choice supportive bias and they stick with that for the rest of the game. Not universally, not in every single choice, but for the most part. If you're feeling like choice supportive bias, this inclination to make a choice and then stick into that choice describes a lot of our incredibly increasingly partisan political discourse, then yeah, that's a lot of what's happening. A lot of our modern day seems to revolve around encouraging people to make a choice, pick a side, and then feeding into this desire to double down on whatever choice that they made. Hopefully for the programmers, this stops you from uh, sitting in a talk at GDC and missing the entirety of the talk as you have to try to prove this to yourself. But also this is relevant to video games because you need to consider the biases that get wrapped up in the Monty Hall problem. The reason why for a lot of people, it doesn't feel like switching is the right choice. So we've got merch now. This is high tea on the high seas. There's a shelf down below the video if you're interested in buying something. Special thanks to my members. They provide the resources that this channel needs to keep running. If you're interested in becoming a member, there'll be a link to that down in the description as well. Did I lose any of you? Are some of you programmers and you literally paused the video and figured this out for yourself? Totally understand. It's exactly what happened to me. Are there cases in gaming where you've experienced this? Where the game was trying to get you to switch and you felt like you couldn't or shouldn't based upon your biases? Let me know that down in the comments as well. 
If you found this video interesting or useful, give it a thumbs up because that will let YouTube know that it should spread it to other people and that will help more people see it. I will see you again soon. Thank you.